everybody and welcome to the mix the only millennial and gen z talk show in the game giving you all the good vibes fun and you know of course we got a mix of opinions baby so y'all it's the last show of the year and we have to talk about all the greatest moments in pop culture and music movies and more in 2021 i am incredibly happy to get close this out in 2021 with my beautiful, incredible, fly, sexy, you know, just dope all around co-host. So how are y'all doing, co-hosts? Hey, you forgot shirtless. Uh, forgot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's not forget that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shirtless, come on, you better get us some views. Hey, it's, the, it's the last show of the year, baby. Hey. I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm gonna call it Nipplegate, it's the Nipplegate show. Right, okay, y'all, well, 2021 had a lot going on. This year was full of big events and news headlines. We had Three Six Mafia and Bone got into a fight on Versus. Ooh. Oprah got in the royal family's business with Ooh. Meghan and Harry. Jeff Bezos took us to space, period. Facebook and Twitter banned Trump. We free Britney, y'all. We free Britney. That's my girl. <laughs> okay, requested she be free from her marriage to Ye. But I want to know from you guys, what are some of your favorite or most memorable moments, or just big headlines of 2021. Now, I'm, I want to be the first to start. Okay. So for me, I just want to say it was Danny Lay and the baby. This was just a really big headline that I feel like touched me as a mom, and I did not like it. And I just felt like, you know, us moms, we go through a lot just being a mom already. And then first-time moms, we go through the most because we don't even know what we're doing. We need help. It's a <laughs> Like I told you, it takes a whole village. And, you know, we go through postpartum and things like that. So, you know, you guys got to meet Danny Lay that time when I wasn't here. And I just wanted to send all my love to her. My girl. Yeah, no, to uh, piggyback off of that postpartum is real. You know, mm -hmm. I see I was there with my mom. She had seven kids. You know, I was there at the hospital with her before and after. And I don't think people realize how much of a toll it takes on a woman. Mm -hmm to mm -hmm. bring new life into this world. You don't just pop out a baby. That baby been in your stomach for nine months. And then when the baby come out, it's, you gotta get back to the new reality. So I just mm -hmm. think of that whole Danny and the baby situation was unfortunate because mm -hmm. of course people argue and they fuss and they all go through whatever they're going through, but it should never be broadcasted like that on social right. media. And as men, we gotta make sure we do better even especially for new moms, because like you said, mm -hmm. postpartum is real. We got to be 10 times stronger, even for the woman to make sure we're, we're taking care of them the right way. Right. That part. Okay. Well, for me, um, it was definitely Facebook becoming meta because it was kind of crazy to see, especially since like I, I grew up on Facebook and I just remember being on it. So when they said that they were going to change the name, kind of like the Staples Center being changed from Staples Center, which I remember seeing my whole life to crypto right? Crypto.com or something like yeah. that. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, and then also too, Jesse Smollett uh, being found guilty, you know, one of the biggest hate crime hoax that I've ever seen. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was crazy to me because it seemed like it had been going on for like two, two years almost. So yeah. him to be found guilty was, was very shocking to me. I want to talk about that for a moment, the Jesse Smollett situation, because he's such a talented artist and it's really unfortunate that he got caught up in this. And I think that even though, you know, he did, he was found guilty. We don't know if he did it or not. I still think that we all make mistakes. And I don't want all of us to cut him off because as a young black man, it's so easy to be, you know, turned away and cut off and, you know, to not give him a second chance. So I definitely want to see, you know, him come back together. And he has a movie that he just directed. I think it was called... Um, b-boy blues that i heard it was really good so you know we're giving this love and light to mr uh smollett love and light to mr smollett you know sure. what in 2022 i feel like we should cancel cancel culture because hey. hey hey come on 
There we go. I like that. But on the topic of getting a second chance, I really wish that George Floyd would have gotten a second chance at life. So I think one of the most important headlines that we can't forget was Derek Chauvin being found guilty for murdering him. And the reason I feel like this is important because it shows the power of the black community. It shows the power of social media and that when we all come together, we really can make change and get justice for someone who can't get justice for themselves. Yeah, justice has to be served when it's supposed to be served. It's that simple in every case. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I feel like that out of everything that happened this year, there were certain things that took place for me on January that it felt like a lifetime ago, but I really wanted to highlight the January 6th insurrection that happened at the Capitol. Like a lot of people want us to forget about it. And we know who those people are, what kind of people those are, but it's important that, that we don't. And I think that it's really sad of what happened and how so many people are not held accountable and how Trump is still out here being free and how he had all of his followers, quote unquote followers come and take over the, the Capitol. So, you know, I definitely want to bring that up. That was wild when that came. Like I was I was filming a movie in Atlanta and like on the breaks, everybody was on their phones. And I was like, what's going on? And I saw like literally people storming the Capitol. It, it didn't even seem real to me. Like I couldn't even believe this. This was happening in America. So definitely that's that was a huge moment for me in 2021. Yeah, isn't it crazy though? Because we gotta realize that we all aren't equal. Unfortunately, uh, they tell us that we're equal and that every human is the same. But when things like this happen, you realize that we aren't equal. So even with that being said, it's like you have to raise your children and your kids a certain way nowadays in this world because. You may want to teach a kid to have that mindset of anything's possible and we're all equal. But at the end of the day, we're not. And we've seen a lot of that in this past year. So uh, I just think I think honestly, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise because we see how much more work needs to truly be done. And I think that puts more pressure on this younger generation, a.k.a. us, Gen Z and the millennials to do our part and to do it even better and and be stronger. And we know what we have to uh, tackle even more could y'all imagine if it was uh just all black people that stormed the capitol what um, would happen to, to that yeah, we would still we would still be talking that, about that today right we talking about it today everybody would have been shot everybody would have been i was kicked. gonna say you would see body bag on body bag on body, body bag, bag. Yeah, and then right. even what you was talking about tom with the jesse thing it's like we get that you know uh it's a terrible situation to be in but there's people committing worse crimes out there right. in the world that Justin has justice hasn't been dealt with. Like so I'm just, yeah. that's exactly Kyle what Ritten. I was gonna say. Yeah. Not I, guilty, even though he went to a protest looking to basically kill someone. Um, he was still found not guilty, and it was self defense. And now he's doing podcasts about it and taking pictures with Trump. Right. That's yeah. what I tell you. He celebrated. They they celebrate him like he's a hero. Yeah, yeah. Like he's an American hero. They definitely. But that's are. what I love about this show, The Mitts. You know, we get to talk about what we want to talk about, and we're gonna celebrate who we want to celebrate. Yeah. We yeah. always gonna celebrate the people who should be celebrated. That's what we're doing here yeah. on The Mitts, for real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One of the biggest news stories of 2021 that I happened to attend was the infamous Astroworld Festival that was put on by Travis Scott. So the latest on that story is that Travis has been losing a lot of sponsors. Most recently. Um, Ansher Bush Company, I'm guessing that's a uh, um, beer, has scrapped the production and sale of Scott's hard seltzer line cacti, and others like Nike have postponed their collaborative sneaker deal with Travis indefinitely. Um, so Travis had his first interview since Astro World with Charlemagne, but many felt that it only made things worse. And the families of the victims were also very upset with the interview, saying that they were offended by Travis's attempt to paint himself as a victim. So did you guys see the interview and do you guys think that Travis can come back from this and be as big as he was before? I did watch the interview um, and I got an interesting tone from him. I didn't really get the tone of, I'm deeply apologetic. I can't believe this happened to these victims. This should have never have happened. I got more so of the tone that it was, you know, I feel bad for myself which you don't, victims don't want to hear that. People don't want to hear that. They want to hear that you are so sorry. 
And so I don't know if that's maybe that's naturally how he is, but I think it did make the situation worse. It did seem as though he put himself in a deeper grave after that interview. Um, I was gonna say, I definitely agree with you, Anton. I feel like the interview wasn't maybe the best thing to do, but I also feel in ways for Travis because, you know, as an artist, I just know how it is on the stage and how, like, you know, zone and tunnel vision, you are up there, how you really, you know, you don't really hear or know or is focused on anything but the show. But to for Travis, it was his concert. So for me, yeah. I just felt like he should have taken more responsibility in the, in the interview, in the interview, because even though, you know, maybe some things weren't his fault is his concert. So, you know, when you are the top dog, you have to be apologetic, be responding, you know, take responsibility. And maybe he could have like went and visit the people instead of doing the interview. I don't really know. Maybe yeah, you know, think, something other than. Yeah, I think with the Travis situation, it's gonna be a great learning point for the younger generation, even the next artists, because even business-wise, what you realize, and I was talking to somebody about this before I even went on stage there, I'm like, how could one person, like, it was amazing to me that this was his festival, because I've been to Coachella and other festivals, but there's never one artist behind it, something that big. So even in the future, you got to realize if your name is on something, no matter if you know everything that's going on or not, you want to make sure you're in the know of from the security, from what happens mm -hmm. if somebody is injured, from X, Y, and Z. Like you got to be up on your game because when it's your name, we already know when it's good, it's good, but when it's bad, it's bad. And this is definitely a learning example for for other artists out there. And I think it's gonna um, it's gonna make concerts and uh, festivals a lot more safer. It's just unfortunate he had to be the fall guy. But like you guys say, even with the interview, everybody's different. You know, everybody, they grieve differently and we're all different, but it's an unfortunate situation for everybody. You know, I read that uh, Coachella took him off of the lineup and that he offered to perform for free and they still declined him performing. So when you offer to perform for free and they still say no, you know, things are bad. Yeah. OK, so on that, though, do you guys feel like this? Is something that he could come back from. I feel like it's going to take a while, but I feel like he can still come from this. Well, with that being said, look, we, we're going to jump into it when we come back. We got to take a quick break, but we have more of the best of 2021 when we come back right here, only on the mix on Fox Soul, baby. Welcome back to the mix. We're going over the best of 2021, and this year has certainly been the year for music. So many dope hip hop and R&B albums dropped this year. We had Migos gave us culture for the third time. Young Thug released Punk. Bieber gave us R&B. We spent an evening with Bruno Mars and Anderson Peck, aka Silk Sonic. Ye dropped Donda. And of course, we can't forget our certified lover boy, Drake. Hey. Okay. Yeah. So I know this is a hard question, guys, but what was y'all's favorite album release of 2021? I'm going to go first. Can I go first? Can I go first? Can I go first? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Romeo, go ahead. I'm gonna just make it quick, but uh, I gotta have uh, Drake up there, Certified Lover Boy. I got Kanye Donda up there. Oh, I got man. Joy Crook Skin, and uh, The Weeknd. The Weeknd is probably my most played album right now. Wow. Mm, yeah. You said Joy okay. Crook, huh? Yeah, Joy Crooks, man. You know, hey, I gotta show love to our Mitz Familia. We got some talented people that slide on the show. Okay. Just the future's up there too, right, Rome? Huh? Anton, I like what you said a little better. Uh-huh, just how he slid into the DMs. I thought, I, I was oh, wondering. Man, go clear. on to, can y'all yeah. keep going? We trying to do a recap of 2020. <laughs> What's your favorite that, album? That, that is the recap. That is a recap. <laughs> What's the your recap. favorite albums, man? <laughs> okay, I'm going to go next. So my favorite album, two of them. Uh, I got to give love to Jasmine Sullivan and Hotels. Love that album. I think she's so underrated. I wish that like she would be even more bigger than she is because she is an incredible force, incredible artist. And then I got to go to Lil Nas X, that Montero album. That album was okay. fire. And the fact of how he's just like breaking all boundaries and doing his thing and being unapologetically him mm -hmm. while doing it. I love it. So I had these albums on repeat for sure. Hey, look, Tan, I got to say something about Lil Nas X. I feel actually he's one of the, he's probably the most talented artist right now, right? But the thing with Lil Nas is, 
even as you're going on your journey, I think he forgets sometimes when you play with the religion stuff, people are going to judge you sometimes for that. So even yeah. with him, I don't even think it's about whether he's gay or not, because people accept him. He's a talented ass artist. It's like an Elton John. But I think more of his kind of clash came with the religion based stuff. Yeah, I think when he did that video where he was, you know, on the stripper pole and we talked about it on our show, when he was giving the devil the lap dance. I felt bad. To be honest, I wasn't rocking with him for like a couple months. I was like, okay, I'm good on him. I don't want to rock with this guy. But then when he started, he performed, I think, on the BET Awards. And I just said, okay, this dude, he's doing something different. Like, I got to rock with this guy. His and talent I, shines bright. If he make it more about his talent, he's going to be an even bigger star. Yeah, we all make mistakes. He's young. You know, he's figuring himself out. So I got to give him kudos, man. Well, well I just got to say. Talent. I, yeah. I'm sorry, Jazz, but I'm just obsessed with. Doja Cat's album, Planet. Doja Cat. Doja. Love this album. It is on repeat constantly. Mm. Hey, do y'all remember when I said she was going to be the biggest artist when we were talking about that yeah. on season one? Yep. Now look. Yep. I'm telling you. But I, I, but I, 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 how do we, okay, Zanik, when you gave your rundown, I loved it, but how do we forget Meek Mill expensive pain? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the rap, I got to give it to uh, Expensive Pain. It's like a toss-up. So Expensive Pain by Meek Mill. And then I really love Voice of the Heroes with Lil Baby and Lil Dirk. I feel like they're both, you know, running running the rap game right now. And just to see them come together and make hits like that, that was that's like probably my most played album this year. So Okay, okay. We knew okay. We, we knew she was going to give us either the baby right. or the baby. We no. okay. 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 What was that mean? What was that mean, Zoe? He minds. I'm gonna stand by his side. I'm what was that? Beside him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stand beside him. Okay, y'all. Let me tell y'all mine. Okay, I know this album kind of just came out, but Summer Walker's Over It album, baby. If it came out at the beginning of the year, I would still be listening to it right now. That was such a great album, and I don't think this was an album, but this project, Gibeon's project. Mm. Um, really had me on a hold, had me on lockdown. So those I forgot are- about that one, Zoe. Yeah. I forgot about hey, that. Give me when I came out this year, uh, and so yeah, those are my two top. Who do you guys think is overdue for a new album or needs to drop one in 2022? Rihanna and SZA. Rihanna, Rihanna, and, Rihanna and SZA. Rihanna and SZA. Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick. Okay. Kendrick who? Kendrick. Romeo too. Miller. Zani okay. Bullets, Anton People, hey. Scott Anderson. Hey, you may be on the subject, Jamie. Hey. You may be on the subject. You may be on the subject. Yeah, but when, when, I put this, when I put this project out, I want a little feature from Jazz, from Zonique, and from Romeo. I want a feature, okay? I, I want an ad-lib good. on it. Let me get the ad-lib, Anton. <laughs> I got you. Okay. I got to have an ad-lib from Jamie. Got to Thank have you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then let me ask you this. What artist would you say made the biggest impact on 2021? Ooh. <laughs> Which I'm artist? Okay, well... Impact? I'll say because I feel like my answer is the best. Oh. No, wait, y'all have to guess. <laughs> um, no, go ahead. We want to hear. Go ahead. I want to hear. Answer yeah. Is Doja Cat because <laughs> yes, I have been, yeah, I mean, I've been following Doja Cat for a very long time, and this was her year. I mean, she's been talented, mm-hmm. been great at what she does, and this was her year. And I feel like you know she took over twenty twenty one. Doja Cat. Hey. Y'all remember when y'all was, people was laughing at me when I'm like, Doja gonna be the next big superstar. Hey, and man. look, she literally, I think she probably, you may be on to something. She probably had the biggest year really other did. than a, a Lil Baby. I think Lil Baby, this was like his coming out year of showing people that mm-hmm. I belong here. Yeah. And I don't think people realize mm-hmm. how much hard work and time he put into the game. People think he's just mm-hmm. a new artist. I start Googling back. It's like, he has been in the game putting in work, but now it's his moment. So I think Lil Baby definitely up there. Mm. Okay. Mm. Like, uh, I'm gonna have I, to I, agree with uh Zanique. I was gonna say Lil Nas X and I want to put him up there too, but I gotta say Doja. Doja is everywhere. Like every, every time you turn on the radio, any award show, like she hosted an award show, she's really doing things in a major way. And to be a black girl doing like mm. pop R and B rap, you know, that's pretty powerful. So shout out to Doja. See, it's crazy. I've never heard a Doja Cat song. Like I would, I wouldn't know one that was like. Yeah. Well, look, let me throw in another one. <laughs> hey, Tom, let me throw in this over. one though. Y'all got to put me on. I'm coming over, Jazz. Don't worry. Hey, Jamie, let's see if Jazz know this one. 
Okay, I think Olivia, I forgot to say her last name, Rodrigo. Yeah. Olivia yeah. Rodrigo, she may have had the biggest come up of the year. When I go in the car and I turn on any radio station, I hear this girl, not one song, not two. I heard three songs back to back. Yeah. I've Ooh. never experienced that in my life. They so shout out to Olivia, man. Okay. She's young and chasing her dreams and she's showing kids out there, look, if you want something, go for it. Anything's possible. Mm -hmm. I want to piggyback because with my pick, I knew y'all were going to get like the big, big ones, but I want to talk about someone who's kind of underground. I chose T Glock just because people who know him like him, but he's a really hard worker, like Romeo was saying. And I really do feel like in the next couple of years, you'll be hearing from him a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I heard that. Well, I was just going to say uh, Drake and Kanye, you know, especially with the. Free Larry Hoover concert they just had. I think they really showed us like what it's like to be a major artist and a performer. So um, I would definitely have to say say those two. Mm -hmm. I heard you. I heard you. I rock with it. I rock with it. Um, wait, well, wait. Out of all the albums you know we've had this year, there's some songs that yeah. really made an impact. So what are you guys' favorite songs of 2021? Oh, um, I'm gonna just say my Spotify rap. Ain't Bleep by Doji Cat was my number one song. <laughs> but anyway. Man, um, you know who I got to go with? And I'm surprised she hasn't came up yet because I feel like she's at the top of every category in 2021, regardless of what it is. It's Cardi B, song of the year. It's up. If it's up, oh, then it's up, then it's up. Then yeah. They got little babies dancing to it. If it's up, they got grown <laughs> men and women. If it's up. Yo, yeah. Cardi B is a true superstar and young legend and i don't think she get her roses like she's at the top of her game and she makes it look so easy and effortless when it's not so shout out to cardi but i think up is one of the songs of the year when you turn that on everybody knows it. Right. yep i was gonna say the, the song of the year to me would definitely be coily ray no more parties really and then when, well, that was a good song yeah, that was it had a hold on people for a minute okay. what? Oh. That song was on every radio station, on every TikTok. It went viral. Then when she did the remix with Dirk, it took off even more. Yeah, it was on the radio in LA. They didn't play it. Was it? Not out here. You know, she in H Town. Consistently in H Town. <laughs> I couldn't turn on the radio. Out here. <laughs> and you know, when I think of a song of the year, I'm just thinking like, what do Lil? It was kind of like that Lil Nas X when he had that Old Town Road, right? It's like, what do Lil mm -hmm. kids listen to? The demographic from five years old to eighty years old. If that song right. come on. They're going to know it. I think Cardi just got that song that everybody Cardi. knows, even if they don't know it. Yeah, but you know what I really think was like the song of the year, though? What? I get my peaches out of Georgia. Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even that peaches, man. I think that was the song of the year, of the summer, of the decade. Like, and you know, I'll be real critical. The on decade? I, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, Hold on. Listen, listen. I'll be real you know, and I love Justin Bieber, but I'm just Hold saying. On. Let me speak my piece. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Real critical on Justin Bieber on this show, as you guys all know. But when I tell you every time that song came on, Black people would be dancing. White people would be dancing. Dancing together. And that was an R&B song to me. Whenever I spin that song, everybody start doing the two-step. Everybody start dancing like... It's a vibe. So just to be with that, that feature song, that was it. For 20 you on to some. I'm just shocked that it's coming out of your mouth because of how you was talking about Justin, not R&B the whole year. Now you're saying that's your song of the year. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. uh -huh. People change. People change. Exactly. I, I like that. Like, I just feel like you guys all tried to name the song of the year, but we're supposed to be naming our favorite song of the year oh. and i'm just oh is that what it is oh. yeah, yeah. I that's what i thought you know so i'm just gonna say <laughs> my my favorite single that dropped this year you know just a single was good days by scissor mm -hmm. that song oh. i hate you had me oh, on yeah the, has me oh, on yeah. the biggest lockdown good days <laughs> yeah that was fire uh, that was fire <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. I'm like just words. listen. I'm like having the song play in my head, but we do have to take a break. So we're gonna actually listen to the song, but don't go anywhere because we have more 21 to come right here on the mix on Fox Soul. So keep it locked. Get my peaches down and on. Welcome back to the mix, and we're still recapping some of the best of 2021. And honestly, I think the internet stole the show this year. 
So with us kind of crawling out of quarantine a little bit, we were still talking on the internet a lot. And we saw an app like Clubhouse go from a private invite only to opening up to everyone this year to come online, talk, connect, and network. But I got to say, I'm that type of person where if it's textable, please don't call me. Just text me. And I love using a good emoji with it. And I saw a post by Complex on Instagram that ranked the top 10 most used emojis worldwide. And of course, the laughing, crying emoji came in at number one. Who else? What else? Um, others included the red heart, thumbs up, folded hands, face blowing a kiss, and hard eyes. But I'm nosy, and I want to know what y'all recent and most used emojis are. So, Romeo, you're the DM king. Why are you Ooh, coming to me first? Because we and can't how did, I'm not taking no title of the DM king. I never. I, I, made, I made it for you. <laughs> it's <a> title <laughs> king. because I'm inspiring the world. Romeo, what are your most used emojis? <laughs> Just tell me. Okay. Wait, don't don't tell us. You should show us. Just do it. Just do it on your face. Let's oh, yeah. <laughs> right. And then we'll so, guess um, them. Let's my guess first them. emoji that I use the most, the praying hands. What did you call it? The It's the folded hands. I call yeah. it the praying hands. Pray hands. I That's the number praying. one. I expect it. Secondly, I use the brown heart. Beautiful brown. Okay. Melanin brown heart. Uh, Wait, who put up an eggplant? <laughs> oh, no, y'all, I didn't put that there. Wait, right, hold on a second. That's what you chose. We all got exposed. Yo, y'all really? Jill. He didn't want to say Jamal. <laughs> Wait, why? Why he got? Wait, why? It's not only the eggplant, but the water squirting out the eggplant. Right, yeah, it's right, so let me explain like, that. Okay, let me explain that. Somebody went through my phone because I didn't put that up there on the show. Not you gotta have balance in life. Right. You gotta <laughs> yeah. have balance. Watch the skinny ones. That's all I gotta say. Oh Watch my god. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's okay. keep it pushing. Can anyone else answer, please? <laughs> okay, okay. Alan. Oh, go, 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 go ahead, Zami. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, right. so my most used emoji of the year was. Is the one where it's like a red face and he like, and he's sweating. Oh, there we no. go. Yeah. He's sweat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, what does, does that, that mean to you? It can yeah. mean a lot of things, but mostly it's like, ah, girl, I'm not going to make it to the party. Ah, sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of different reasons. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. See, mine is actually the most used emoji I use is the prayer hands as well. Uh, and then I would have to do the laughing emoji. Those are the only two that I really use. I'm not a big emoji person. And then I do the one that's like, where it's like, where the face yeah. is like that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Those are like the only three I use. I feel like. Okay. okay. Well, my favorite one is the one that was like, Okay. <laughs> It'll work out. Oh, okay, yeah, for sure. Oh, that's, key. I, that's that's my spirit all day. Like you send me some crazy shit, but like, <laughs> well, I told you. I look, I hey, Tan, see, that's a cheat code because that could you could get away with anything. They, you could be mad at somebody and put yeah. that. They could seem something oh, crazy. My put God. that. They could send some literally. Sexy. Yep. Con, I love to use that when I'm in an argument, but I'm trying to act like, huh, don't care though. I'm all good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not use that. Use for anything. anything. Okay. Um, mine is, I just want to talk about my emoji. It's the just the girl standing. And let me tell you why. Wait, huh? I know. <laughs> let me tell you why. I've though. never even seen that. <laughs> I've never seen that either. <laughs> let me tell you why. I've used because her if, before, Jamie. If someone sends me a text that I don't know how to respond to, I don't want to respond to, or I just don't care, I just send that emoji. Because then their next question is, oh, what does that mean? Why did you send that? And then we shift the conversation and I don't have to answer your question. Now you're Ooh. asking me about the emoji. That's Jamie, my you are a emoji con artist. Yeah, what? <laughs> I'm just, I, that's how my brain works. But and then when, like, know what's coming. when they ask you about that emoji, like, what does that mean? Don't you have to say, like, why? No, you, you just say, mind? like, oh, haha, ha, like, I just like this emoji. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then, you know, you move on. <laughs> that is horrible communication. I said what I said. I do what I do. Gen Z, well, y'all move different, I see. It's what it is. Do, like any it. Guys use, not like, do any of you guys use emojis for like contact? For like names? Almost your- all my contacts have emojis by it. Oh, uh, is that plug, childish? Like, when, I, when somebody's helping me get something, I got the plug, the little in- outlet. Yeah. Okay. Me too. Yeah. 
I think it just helps visually sometimes. Yes. That's what I was gonna say. The only time I use it is if it's someone I know I have to respond to or I know I want to, and I'm like, okay, it's an emoji, I should respond. Oh, it's not. Mm, let us oh, lie. so it's level. So people with emojis Absolutely. are higher up on the yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. For sure. No, my let me mom, tell you why. Go ahead, Jess. My mom, I was gonna say, my mom is the only person in my phone with an emoji, and she has the little light bulb because I know she's always gonna say something yep. insightful. But she's oh, the only person with an emoji in my phone. So. That says a lot, Jazz. Two things, Jazz. That's a, that's a lot. I want to say two things. Jazz, you're one of those people who I would text and see you're not using an emoji. So every time I type one, I would erase it because I feel childish. I don't like <laughs> it. And then, Jamie, I was going to say, I agree with you on people that you love the most have emojis because I have so many contacts. I have a contact in my phone that's like, this guy named Leroy from the get that I bumped into at the gas station. My oh my god! Yeah, so you know the people I love, y'all got to get emojis. Yeah. I feel you. But look, with that being said, you know what I saw is coming back to Instagram. Well, technically, I didn't see it. My little brother saw it, and they told me. And then some of the producers on the mix saw it, and they told me to bring it up in 2022. But Instagram is bringing back the chronological feed. That's right. Mm. The feed on your social media is going back to their old ways and giving you a chance to see what your friends and celebs post in order when they actually posted it. Yes. So it's no more seeing the photo from two days ago at the top of your feed. Those days uh, are over. Are you guys happy about this? I'm just saying. Yes. Are y'all happy it's going back to the old algorithm on Instagram? You know what? Instagram, you know, they got a whole lot that they need to fix and redo. There's a lot of yeah. stuff. You know, that's yeah. just, like, this is old school. What's going on? Like, it's a lot they need to change. But this is a good thing. Good start, Instagram. It's yeah, this was something. Yeah, go ahead, Zoe. Well, I was, you know, going to be the oddball of the family. I'm with it going back to normal. But I have gotten so used to how it is that, you know, I kind of like being able to be like, you know, somebody's like, oh, you didn't see my post? And maybe I seen it, but I was like, girl, I did not see it. Like, you know, the feeds be like, and I could just say I didn't see it because maybe I didn't see it. You get what I'm saying? Oh it's my crazy. God. You know, you know I what's funny? One of the, the VPs who work over there, Justin Anthony, he worked on the Nick, my Nickelodeon show with me, the Romeo show, and he worked at Instagram now. And he gave me these updates before it happened. But the wow. thing with me is, I don't really use Instagram as much as people think. I'll just post things mm. and I have like three, four other people who go in there and post stuff too. But mm -hmm. I never even really noticed the difference. Mm. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, it's really bad. It's, because yeah. it's really bad. It's been yeah, and it's crazy because yeah, no. I, was just, I never noticed it either. And I'm always on Instagram. But I didn't know that it's pictures from days ago. I don't know. I'm just scrolling like, yeah. like I didn't yeah, know that. Now, I don't like when I like a picture and it says like, and I look down and it says like, oh, three days ago. Then I definitely feel like a stalker. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this girl been stalking me. <laughs> So we're yeah. all we're all in agreement that we don't like the Instagram feed out of order, right? Yeah, disagree with that right now. Tomato, tomato. I'm yeah, trying. Okay, so you know, I also peep that you can go live speaking on Twitter, and that is definitely changing the game, y'all. Because Twitter is its own app. Like I feel like you know we don't do live and stuff like that. I love but Twitter. have you got? I love Twitter, but have you got yeah. going live on Twitter? Wait, Zoe, you could go live on Twitter now. That's what they say. That's what they're yeah, not that's what they say. <laughs> Y'all know that Twitter is the R-rated version of Instagram, so them lives gonna be BT and cut. Oh, oh. Twitter, got, Twitter got a lot of that. Anytime that I want to see like a, um, a celebrity sex tape, like it comes out, I go straight to Twitter, and I can go to Twitter. Always shows it. They always yeah. show it. Okay. Now, Twitter, Twitter don't hold back. It doesn't have rules. I right, see. Uh -huh. Period. Well, listen, I, I know one of the biggest social media moments here at The Mix was us getting the 50,000 followers, yo. Yes. And it means so much to us that you guys are fans of the show and you tune into us every Tuesday and every day on social media. We want to thank all of you for supporting us and continuing to follow our content. And there is so, so, so much more in 2022, baby. So keep liking and no, keep liking. <laughs> No, this no, this you, okay? And we also got to shout out everyone no, that watches this live and I'm stripping. on YouTube. We got to shout out everybody that watches this live in the comments on YouTube. We love you. And we got to take a little break. But listen, don't go too far because we'll be right back here. <laughs> we got 50,000. I'm stripping. 
Welcome back to the mix, you guys. So let's get right back into our year in review for 2021. Yeah, I'm still putting on my clothes. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but look, <laughs> TV plays a big role in our lives. And this year brought some really great shows, of course. Mm -hmm. But the only show in 2021 I was watching, get ready, The Mitts on Fox Soul. Yes, I'm just saying. Oh, I'm watching The Mitts yeah. all day, all night. <laughs> but also, <laughs> look, a lot it. of other great shows return. We had some new shows that broke a lot of records and took over. Can y'all guess what show I'm about to bring up right now? Squid Game. Squid Game, Game on Netflix. I knew it. The show yeah. literally blew up wow. overnight, even wow. though it didn't blow up overnight because they worked on it for probably like seven, eight years, the dude said, but it blew up overnight to us. Everybody was on it. Even for Halloween, everybody dressed up as a Squid mm -hmm. Game character. Who else got into Squid Games here? Because I know I did. I watched it in a day I and a half. I, I wanted to take y'all to watch it. Oh, in one night. embarrassingly, I yeah, one night. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, it took me a um, it definitely took me like a week. Yeah, when you have a baby, I watch the wiggles mostly. So you know, <laughs> okay. I'm not. Well, what what other shows were you guys really into? Uh, Ooh. Go ahead, Romeo. Go ahead. Okay. So look, other shows I was into. I got to throw out Manifest that was on Netflix. I love that show. I never watched because, it. Oh, watch it. I'm telling you, you're going to be addicted. Check out Manifest because it's a dope spin on life and something divine and bigger than you guiding you somewhere. I don't want to give you too much, but I want to hop into The Bachelorette. I'm not lying. It's my guilty pleasure. My sister and actually my little brother, Mercy, put me on. Mercy, be, he'll go to basketball practice, drop 50 in the game, then go watch The Bachelorette. So I had to see what it was all about. And I love this year with Michelle because watching this show, it actually teaches you how to love um, correctly because you learn so many other people's mistakes by watching them. I learned even from watching Michelle's season this year is that you're going to hurt somebody and somebody's going to be heartbroken if you actually, if you go after love and if you choose what you want to do in your life. So every choice you're making, you're letting somebody else down, but you have to always follow your heart. So shout out to the Bachelor Red mm -hmm. and Michelle season for actually... Uh, giving me that little gem in life. Somebody's going to be heartbreaking, but it's not your fault. Max. Well, I was watching Snowfall. Listen, Ooh. Snowfall. I didn't get into it until we had um, one of the cast members on our show. And I had to watch like one of the episodes before he came on the show. And I've been hooked. Like I've all the seasons. And you know, uh, the lead, I think his name is Damson Idris. He's like a huge fan of Denzel Washington. Oh, yeah. Always doing like impersonations of Denzel. And so um, an interviewer asked Denzel recently while he was premiering at a movie if he knew who this guy was because everyone is saying that he is the next Denzel. Denzel didn't even know the man's name. Didn't even know who he was. I, I saw why y'all acting like that's a big deal? That's, like, why that's, 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 that's not unbelievable. He, I mean, like that. he said that he auditioned for like to play his son in Fences. Like he's like, auditioned for him before. No, <laughs> but that's that's at home. Let me yeah, say though, like I don't, I don't watch Snowfall at all, so I didn't know who Damson was at all until people were saying they were like his man crush, and that's how I got him to it because I was like, oh, okay, this is the guy who plays in Snowfall. So honestly, like you can't fault Denzel. He's if he's not watching the show, he's probably not on social media like that. He's like, right. six but I feel like he should know all the new up and coming black male actors. I feel like he has his hit his ear to the street. Why should he know, Anton? Yeah, Tell why? me why. Yeah, I think, I think he should know because like he is there's not that many leading males, black males in the industry who are really still probably fishing right now. He ain't watching TV. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have to say my favorite show of 2021 was Miss Pat on BT. Oh, um, shout out to my mom. She was on that <laughs> show. And I always say, like, we don't have a lot of funny Black sitcoms. Like, it reminds me of my wife and kids, honestly. I don't know if you guys are, are familiar yeah. with that show. Other but Miss um, Pat is a great show. My mom's on it, and it's coming back next year, so I'm excited to see that. But yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I was watching that show uh, with Nick, and actually, we were cracking... It's uh, hilarious. Your mom is really good on the show, too. She's Thank really you. funny. I didn't know she was funny like that. Yeah. <laughs> She's really funny. Well, for my show, I said Squid Game. So we already touched on that. So I'll just say any and all true crime documentaries on, like, Netflix and Hulu, I bet you I watched it. 
<laughs> okay, so if you like those type of shows, Jamie, you should, you know, get into my pick. My pick is Dexter. Ooh. Well, I'm sorry, not even Dexter. Dexter New Blood. There's a new season that came out, y'all. It, I mean, I can't even get into it because I'll stay on this forever. Like, I love Dexter. Thank you for coming back to playing Dexter. And also, um, I wanted to say, you know, I also love BMF and Ghost and um, Kanan. You know, it was a lot of those shows. 50, I, I, this is for you. It's me again, Zonique. You know that versus thing I was talking about? I was just, I was playing. And, you know, I've been wanting to be in one of them shows for a minute. Please give me a role. 50, give me a role. Like, you know, stop playing. And I'm done. I'm, I'm going to stop bothering you. Hey, Zoe, but I got to tell you, we just had a big meeting yesterday for my dad. And his series is coming to, I can't say which one, maybe HBO, uh -huh. maybe Hulu, maybe something else. But it's going to be one of the biggest shows next year. And I already got some. I got a, a character for you already ready. So I'm just saying. I love you. Get out, Masterpiece yeah. show. You definitely would be in there, Zoe, once everything get up and running in 2022. What did oh, I say? I said I'm we make dreams come true. Make dreams come true. Make dreams come true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 2022 is so, about to be a good year. Yep. I'm not hey. <laughs> <laughs> so this year was also a year where we saw movie theaters open their doors again for some films, while others kept the streaming alive with the release of their projects. But I got to say, one of the biggest releases happened on March 5th. 2021 and that was coming to America too. This had to be one of the most highly anticipated comedy sequels of all time with over 30 years passing since the original. So I got to ask y'all, what are the other movies that you guys would say had big releases this year? Oh, movie movies. I love movies. Shout out to uh, Eddie Murphy. I think people don't realize um, how much of a legend he is. He's probably like a one of one. I don't think we have anybody else on his level doing it in the game for the time he's been doing it. So shout out to Eddie Murphy um, coming to America too. But me, I love 007. You know, that's why I'd be whipping the Ashton Martin. I'd be thinking as a kid, I thought it was 007. It was so hard. I definitely tapped into No Time to Die. But uh, anything with Zendaya, man, the new Spider Man, okay. No Way Home, and then Malcolm and Marie. Um, I, I definitely love those movies as well. Zendaya could do no wrong. And I mm -hmm. think Zendaya is an amazing uh, forefront for this next up and coming actors in Hollywood, for real. That's, uh, hey, that's, 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 that's Emmy winner Zendaya. Wow, <laughs> exactly. I forgot about that. The title right, baby. <laughs> but also, talking about Zendaya, we didn't bring up Euphoria. And I don't know if a season came out that. in 2020, but January 9th. I know the new season is coming and I want to put that on my list of like my favorite shows. It looks crazy. Okay. I, saw the, I saw the trailer for season two. It looks crazy. I'm yes. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, I'm just so gonna, okay go ahead, Tom. I'm going to go ahead and this movie kind of like broke boundaries for me and it was really, really special. It's called The Harder They Fall. It was a black Western <laughs> on Netflix and it was really beautiful to see like black people kicking ass. I hope I can say what? ass. On his was show. Idris Elba in there? Idris yeah. Elba was in there, Regina King. Um, so many, so many incredible dope artists. Like it, the cast was like amazing. And they were playing hip hop music in a Western. Like what? It was crazy. Hey, Tan, you know I was up for one of the roles in there. Are you serious? I forgot his name, but the speedy one. The one who was fast with the gun. Oh, that was that was my favorite character too. That's yeah, I was up, I was up for that character, and that's how he died because they say you're doing too many tricks, you too yeah. loud. And he got oh, wait, since y'all are the actors, you know I have to be nosy. Right. I know you guys had a great 2021 with your careers, and baby, I'm so proud of you both. I love you to death. But I'm nosy, and I want to know what projects you have coming for 2022. Ooh. Ooh. How much how much time you got? Busy. Yeah, um, myself, I have a movie I've actually been working on for eight years that I'm really excited about. Uh, I mentioned it on here before. It's called One Heart, which I really believe in my heart and soul is gonna be up for a lot of Oscar talk. Um, it's one of those type of films based on a true story. But I'm excited about this other movie I got with uh, uh Bishop T D Jakes, who I did uh jumping the broom with. I can't give too much about that, but you'll be seeing that next year as well. A thriller movie. And then I got some other things in the works as well. My movie, Monster, that I'm starring in, directing, and producing. And it's kind of like a Creed meets a Scarface. So, hey, Zoe, 
Actually, I may holler at you about Monster. That's all I gotta say. Hey, put me in. Hey, put me in, coach. Put me in. Put me in. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I can talk about mine. So, of course, I can't wait for the world to see All American. Um, it's a spinoff of All American Homecoming. Y'all finally Ooh. get to see what I've been doing. So that's gonna be dope. Yeah. It's gonna premiere in 2022. And I'm also working on a project that I can't really talk about, but when I tell you guys when this comes out, it's one of the, something I've always wanted to play and always wanted to do. And so I finally get to shine in a way that I haven't been able to shine. So I'm very excited about that. And then there's a project that my sister and I created that you guys will be seeing very, very shortly. Very well, Tan, you say you can't talk about this last project, but what emojis could you put? Mm, uh, great question. Oh, great. <laughs> oh. Give, us, give us two emojis. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you that one. I'm, I'm also gonna give you the. <laughs> Oh, uh, so it's gonna have you okay. crying. Range, I got range, brother. I got range, range. Wow. Oh hey, Jamie, I gotta yes. ask you because I know you're not into acting and everything yet, but if you could play a role in any movie, like what would it be? What would be um, your dream role? Uh, I don't know. Any movie that you'll put me in, Romeo? I, you know, I'll <laughs> take one of those. That's a great answer. Me and Zoe can be sisters in a movie, you know, put us <laughs> together. Um, mm. well, actually, I am going to take acting classes just because y'all inspired me to do it, okay. just to like, you know, step into it. So okay. here he is. All right. So breaking news, Jamie dream role is to play opposite Zoe and be her sister in a movie. Absolutely. Got it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, while, while she goes and take those acting classes, we're going to take a little <laughs> break. So we'll be right back, y'all, on Fox Soul. Come right Thank back. Welcome back to the mix, everybody. So this year, it's been a tough year for so many. And we, again, just want to thank you all for watching our show. And we hope that we made you smile through the tougher times and entertained you all. This is our little Zoom show that could. And we want to thank Fox Soul for giving the younger generation a platform. We're so thankful and grateful for you, Fox Soul. But before we go... Let's look ahead to 2022. Now, you know that on our show, we love to give our guests an opportunity to manifest something that they want to happen for themselves. But I thought that, you know, this would be a good chance for us to manifest what we want in 2022. So who wants to go first? Ladies first. Uh, okay, I mean, I'll go first. So I want to say my New Year's resolution would be to speak my feelings when I feel them. I feel like I'm such a like, oh, I'm going to hold this in until somebody makes me mad. Then I'm just going to say how I feel. I don't want to do that next year. Next year, mm -hmm. I want to I say how I feel when I actually feel it. Mm -hmm. And I want to manifest for me to step all the way into my entrepreneurship. You know, like next year, hey. I'm trying to get to all the bags. I'm trying to, you know, be <laughs> on my, <laughs> you know, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, be doing some stuff next year. You feel me? So those are yeah. my things. I feel you. I got to piggyback off of that because entrepreneurship is so big. That's how we mm -hmm. close that woke gap. That's how we make a difference for our people. And with that being said, you know, I'm trying to take over the grocery stores with my pops. You know, we got the wrap snacks. Okay. You know, we got the fish fry. Ooh, you know, fish we got, fry. We got they got the, the flavors. Crunch, you know. Yeah. Okay. We got the we got the King Kong and energy drink. Oh, we got the L.A. great water that keeps you fresh. Oh, Ooh. but it's just about uh, being the, the <laughs> best version of myself. And I want to take over the grocery stores and so I could be able to give back more. You know, the more we make, the more we could give. And that's what it comes down to with me. If the right people have the, the wealth and the power, I think that's how we give back to our community and, and everything becomes a better place. So I just want to be one of the biggest philanthropists ever. Like, that's my resolution. I want to give until I can't give anymore. And uh, hopefully I inspire the next generation to do the same. And, you know, uh, probably have some kids. I don't know. Hey. Oh, that's it. Hey. You gonna have, Romeo, let me tell you now, you were about to have some kids because um, two years ago, is it? I was like, I just feel like, I don't know. I just kept saying, baby, 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 baby. Next thing you know, I ended up with a baby. So I'm hey. telling you, now, the you. kids are coming for you. Hey. So I'm going to be like the CLB, the, the uh, album cover for Drake last album, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let, let, let me get in there. Let me manifest something. I, I really want to manifest season three of The Mix, uh, successful season, our viewership going up. 
I would love to get Drake, Cardi B, SZA, and Erica Badu on the show in our season three. I'm manifesting yeah. that. And Kanye, that would be yeah. incredible. Throw Angelina Jolie Ooh. in there. Hey, Throw Angelina, come we can get Angelina. Ooh. I also want to manifest uh, P44, my oil making a million dollars in 2022. Yeah. Okay. On that. And I also want to manifest my mansion. I want to get my house. I want to be a homeowner in 2022. Ooh. That's you. Yeah, yeah, make things happen on the mix. Period. So, okay. Period. so uh, my New Year's resolution would definitely be, you know, I'm going to be honest, I had a lot of toxicity within friendships and relationships. So uh, for 2022, I just really want a detox from all that and for God to just have the right people in my life who are meant to be here. And then manifest, I want to be sitting next to you guys for season three, you know, in studio. Period. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I was going to say that my manifestation, I want to be able to hug you guys every Tuesday instead of just saying like, oh my God, hey, on Zoom. Right. Um, but I honestly was just praying about this this morning of like, I prayed to God to bring me closer to my purpose because mm-hmm. I feel like especially it's like super easy to get caught up in like, you know, obviously I, we all want to be rich. We want a mansion, but I also do like Romeo said, want to give back because I've had a lot of people help me in a lot of ways personally that got me where I am today and so I want to give back to them at least but you know like Romeo said go even further and I hope that my purpose on this earth is to help someone heal is to help someone be them better selves but first I have to be my best self and on that great note guys that is our show tonight We want, oh, to thank, wow. <laughs> we want to thank all of our fans for getting into the mix with us yes. this year. Yes. And may your new year be full of joy, peace, and health. Travel yes. safe, party safer. And let's make this year a year full of blessings and good fortune. Up next is the Black Report, so keep it locked right here. Romeo, get the water. Where's your water? Happy New Year. Oh, y'all want me? I got to pour the, the water. water. Dump the water. Yeah. Dump the water.